Juan in Santiago, Chile writes to me, Paul, why do hi-fi DAX cost so much? <laughs> Compared to a similar performing audio interface, it doesn't make any sense to me to pay thousands for something that I can also pick up for, you know, less than a hundred dollars. Um, and some of those do even more than Hi-Fi DAX since it's capable of digitizing analog inputs. So he must be talking about maybe a, a little pro A to D, D to A on that. Some spec DAX can cost up to 20 times the price of an audio interface, like in the pro world. Why is that? Well, <laughs> you are right, my friend. We've got a little Focusrite we, we use for some of our test equipment. Um, Focusrite is a, uh, they make the, what, the Scarlet or what, I forgot what their, their brand name, but it's a little box and it's got an A to D and a D to A and it's got nice specs and it's got a little wall wart and I think it's under $100, right at $100. Now, our DAX, well, we have a nice DAC built into our Sprout, which the whole Sprout, which is an integrated amplifier, is about 700 bucks. But um, I think our probably lowest price single DAC is probably 1,500, couple grand. A lot more, 10 times more than the, the Pro version, right? And the specs, they're about the same. So it's a great question. And, and part of the reason is, a DAC, if I were to just take a DAC chip, let's just take a Burr Brown or an Analog Devices DAC chip, which has 70% of everything you need for a DAC, it's about that big, just a little tiny thing. And then there's a peripheral, uh, periphery of other stuff that could fit into the palm of my hand. You add a wall wart to it, and the total cost of this for me as a manufacturer, 30 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that, not much. And it'll have great specs, and it'll sound good. Now contrast that with what we do in high-end audio. If you look at one of our DACs, it's in a separate chassis. It's, and you open it up, there's a lot of stuff in there. Big power transformers because they sound better. Big power supplies, because they sound better. Discrete analog output stages, because they sound better. Now, DAC chips have built-in output stages. I don't need any of that. But if I want it to sound good, if I want it to represent a high-end audio product, I'm gonna have to go to all those steps. I here's an example. This is not a DAC. This is an input stage to the BHK650. Now, that is big, right? You can see it? There is a ton of power supply capacitors. There are vacuum tubes. There are coupling capacitors. There are multiple regulators. And all of this is part of the power supply and the input stage for a power amplifier. An input stage that I could duplicate with a chip about that size. And yet, we choose to make that size. Why? Because it sounds better, a lot better. And you need all this stuff to do that. So can you make something cheaper and smaller? Absolutely, people do it all day long. Can you make something that sounds the way our products do? cheaper and smaller like that, we've not been able to figure out how to do it. Because I tell you what, I wouldn't spend all this money. You know how much time? We've had almost two years of engineering has gone into this. Yeah, that costs a lot of money. And we don't sell that many. So if we didn't have to, we wouldn't. But we do because we do. <laughs> all right. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later. Bye.